And if they wait, when are they going to go? Are they going to go 200, 400, 600, well, there's 800? The, there, there's the list of who's in it. Who's to watch? Obviously, David Weir uh, from Great Britain is going to be a contender. Who else the is? The top four guys there, Marcel Hoog, uh, David Weir, uh, Kurt Fernley, and Prawat Waharam, I think are the, are the four guys that you're really going to want to watch. That's, there's Hoog right there. Not betraying any emotion whatsoever. You can't even see his face in that. And there's David Weir. And you can hear from that wall, there's still a lot of people here. It's 20 past 10 London time. It's, uh, it's pretty late for a Sunday night. It's a, it's a school night. People have got to work tomorrow, but they're still here cheering on all these Paralympians. There's Kurt Fernley of Kurt, Australia. Yes. He'd, he'd be another contender. He's certainly one of the other contenders for Wat Waharam. Uh, it certainly is a contender from Thailand. I mean, everybody in this race is solid, and that's the thing, that you can look at those first four guys and say those might be the guys. Aaron Gordian out here. Chinese guys, you just never really know. I mean, you look at so many of these Chinese races, and you just don't know much about them. But that's what's going to make it exciting, is that these, you know, the four guys, Weir and Fernley, can, can look at each other the whole time. So here we go, the 5,000 metres, last track event of the night here in the Olympic Stadium in London, Paralympics London 2012. And it's a tactical battle right from the start. Now, is it a good idea to get, get to the front? Is it, where, where do, where's your ideal position in that race to be? Well, the thing is that, that right now, part of it is you just want to be safe. You just want to be safe. And actually, they're putting in some, uh, putting in some pretty serious, this is what harm who's out there putting in some serious time into the pack right now, just just shaking things up. And the thing is, you're going to be safe, more safe, if it's if it's all strung out. And I think part of it also is that they look at Marcel Hoog on the back there, and he's all the way on the back. Actually, maybe that's not Hoog on the back. I don't, I'm not sure who it is on the back then. But it's uh, definitely number four in the leads. Yep. Bahorum of Thailand. And so they're hurting a couple of these guys on the back and string it out a little bit. Looks like we're bringing it, bringing the gap up to Fernley there, has no problem whatsoever closing that gap. Who gives right behind, behind Weir? So you pulled that absolutely right with uh, Lahoram in the lead. Then, then it's uh, the Aussie Fernley, David Weir. Hang in there. So the, the Thai athlete just moving out there saying, I've done my bit, someone else can have a go. He's done his bit, and generally when he does his bit, he hurts other people. Yeah. He has, he has just tremendous acceleration, and so he'll hit it really hard, wind the pace up, and, and the people people on the back will feel, will feel the effects of it. And I think that's one of the things that you're going to have to do uh, versus a guy like Fernley who goes to the front. And when Kirk goes to the front, it, it doesn't even look like he's working. I mean, not that he's not going fast, but it just looks like he's... And now it's getting a little bit more tactical. Where Kurt's gone all the way out into lane three, and Weir is following him all the way out into lane three, and he's saying, "Okay, this is the way you guys are going to play it. I'm going to have to have to do a little bit more work here." Sorry, this is why you will not run a fast, a world record time in yeah. the 5K in the Paralympics because everybody has the ability to go that time and sprint off of that time. So it's Fernley of Australia and Weir of Great Britain in second place and the rest of the, it, it's irrelevant really where the places are because any one of those could still win this race really from, from the positions they're in. Oh, for right now, I mean, they're, they're what? They're two and a half laps into, into this race and you can see this is, this is slowed down to, to a training run right now. Nobody's, nobody's in trouble though. They're looking over their shoulder at that guy, Waharam, because he's the guy who's gonna go and open it up a little bit got Weir coming out on the outside, but it doesn't look like he's making any kind of decisive move. He's just there in the event that something happens so that he doesn't get boxed in, really. So when it's this slow, you're get, you run the risk of getting boxed in, and then somebody can come off the, off the back. And Castle of France just, just tucked in and behind the And here comes with Harum again, going back up to the front. So he's someone that doesn't seem to be able to settle to a speed. Wahara. I mean, like, does he do that deliberately to break up the rhythm of the other competitors? He's going to break up the rhythm. The thing is, you only have so much energy to spend as you're doing this. Ideally, 
you'd like to spend that energy in your sprint at the finish that gets you to the finish line. But part of it is that you can't always wait that long. You can't wait till the finish line. And so he's, he's shaking it up a little bit. And if he shakes it up a little bit, then somebody has to go and chase him down and they're burning a little bit of their energy just to make it work, burn a little bit of that sprint. Uh, the front wheel of some of the competitors gets right close to the people ahead of them. And how often? Oh, you'll bump. You'll see yeah. there. There'll be little, little black scars on the back of the of the bar there because people will will continually bump into that. You can see David Weir in third place and uh, the Frenchman in second place ahead of him. He's, uh, Weir's front wheel is getting very close to his fingers on the on the wheel that he's doing. I mean, would that be common to catch people's fingers? Oh, it, it can happen, most definitely. And there's Waharam again, who's coming through. And he's just trying to shake up the field a little bit. And the thing is, Kirk Fernley's been on the front, and he's got to go chase. So it's consistently been uh, Cassily of France has been in the top four, along with Waharam of Thailand, Weir of Great Britain, and Fernley of Australia. They've pretty much always been the top four. But um, the Thai competitor keeps going forwards and backwards. <laughs> Castle's pretty much always been second. He's he keeps going to the front and then pulling out and assuming that somebody else is going to take some time and nobody has. So, so at this point we have uh, we have Kim from from Korea who's decided that he's going to going to take the lead. I was thinking someone is going to have to take this race by the horn to say I'm sorry I'm, I'm going to go for it. And Kim is not one of the favorites but who knows? He could be somebody who could who could be in there. He's a good, strong athlete. So it's Kim from Korea, from Waharam from Thailand, and David Weir from Great Britain in third place at the moment, Fernley of Australia in fourth. So what do we know about Kim? Is he someone that could do any damage, or is he? Is this his only chance, really? Would no, be he's, a, he's a good, solid athlete, and he could, easily, he could easily be right in there. He's not one of what I would consider to be the top four favorites, but that doesn't mean he couldn't win it. He could easily win it as it shakes down. There are a lot of athletes in this race who could win if the race shakes out the way that they want. The hardest part is that there's a lot of patience involved in this race and letting the race unfold and not getting ahead of yourself and not getting all anxious as the race is going. And and there are people who, you know, there'll be a little bit of talking in the race. If somebody's like, hey, come on, go ahead, go, go take the front or somebody pulls off into lane three and the expectation is that when they pull off that you as the second place person are going to take over the pacemaking and we've seen that that hasn't really happened here so nobody's been doing the pacemaking and Kurt Fernley's been up at the front but he doesn't look like he's doing a whole lot of pacemaking right now he's just he's just sort of cruising along Fernley of Australia 31 years of age Behind him is the Frenchman, Julian Cassily, who's 30. The oldest uh, competitor in the age. Uh, Martinez of Mexico is 48, and Yamamoto, Japan, 46. But there's no young teenager in this race that's going to suddenly come through and no. win, as we've seen in other events. I guess in the, in the stamina events, the youngsters uh, haven't quite got it yet. Haven't quite got it yet, no, no. So it's Liu who's actually the youngest in the race, and... Hugh still is kind of the kind of the young kid, but he's been around. He's been a young kid who's been around for a long time. Eight years ago, he was the young guy. He's not really the young guy anymore. You can see Fernley of Australia in the lead. They're looking up at the screen just to see what's happening behind him rather than yes. turning his head, intelligently using the big screens in the stadium. And look at those packed crowds. I'm, I'm very proud of the and London audience go. for not leaving. And There's now another of the Koreans. Making a bit of a break. Miss Hong trying to get to the front and effectively all he's doing at this point is picking up the pace just a little bit. So some of these would uh, have better sprint finishes than others so, and those without sprint finishes will be the ones that are trying to pick the pace up I guess. They're trying to pick the pace up and there's just a bit of impatience I think that 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 sometimes it's just a matter of getting to the front and it seems like you kind of people want to get going they're so jacked up for this race and think okay well let's let's make something happen something's going to happen. Well, it's a, a fascinating competition happening here. It's the, uh, the 5,000 metres, which is 12 and a half laps of the track. Just uh, as we watch Japan uh, taking the lead now. Let me, let me just tell you what Oscar Pistorius said after the, uh, the race where he lost. Uh, 
he says that the guy who beat him, the Brazilian, Alan, that his, um, his stride length, he can't compete with it because his knee highs are four inches higher than they should be. Um, Interesting. He says, we've yeah. spoken to the IPC about the length of the blades, but it's fallen on deaf ears. Guys are coming from nowhere to run ridiculous times. I don't know how you pull that back. I run at 10 metres per second. I don't know how someone comes back from eight metres behind in the home straight. It's not right. So Oscar not happy. Be interesting to see how that plays out. And so the pace definitely has picked up. It's a little bit more honest pace right now. And the honest pace, the thing is that most of these guys will have run races where it's an honest race mm. and an honest pace. And so it feels more comfortable. It feels like you understand how the race is going. Whereas when you get to the biggest stage, it becomes a lot more of a tactical and strategic race. So is that it, it, it really causes a bit of, of disquiet for a lot of the a lot of the athletes just because it's not something you recognize and then you're constantly feeling like you're looking around to see where somebody else is and you're going to get boxed in and some people love it and some of the guys who are sprinters can make the space to get out of the out of the box and get going and can you believe the noise in the stadium particularly on the bends it's so loud it what is the, what the crowd do is is as the athletes pass in front of them it's almost like a mexican wave of noise and particularly on the bends just listen to it build as they come so they'll go past a quiet bit, which is where the press are, and then they'll come to the bend, and suddenly there's loads of people. And so they've already gone past the world record time right now and still have still have a few laps to go. So it's Hoog of Switzerland, and we're of Great Britain still in second place. That's why the crowd is so noisy. And then it's the Thai competitor, then the Australian, and the Koreans just fallen back at the moment. And so this is... This is actually the, the bell lap. So this is when things are going to start to happen. In the heat, you saw, you saw Weir put a lot of space between himself and everybody else. And he's trying to do that again. And Kirk Fernley is on his wheel right now. So it's Hoog of uh, Switzerland in the lead. David Weir, though, in a perfect position to get him. And just listen. Oh, and they just clashed wheels there, I think. Hoog in the lead. Then it's Weir. Then it's Wahram of Thailand and Fernley, the Australians, coming wide round the outside. What a fantastic last lap this is. Who's going to get it? Three of them together. Oh, the Thai athlete just got bumped there. Weir's in the lead. Weir's going to win it. Weir for Great Britain. He's going to win the 5,000 metres. David Weir of Great Britain wow. wins the 5,000 metres. And Kurt Fernley of Australia got the silver. And spare a thought for Prawat Wahram of Thailand, because I think he got bumped on the inside there. It looked there. like he got pinched on that final and turn. And he looked like he's doing very well, but look at that, and what a popular winner. David Weir, look how happy he is in front of his home crowd. He's won the 5,000 metres at his home games, London 2012. And there's it's Kate Sebastian Middleton, Coe. there's Lord Coe, and uh, Kate can't quite believe it. <laughs> Sebastian's pretty happy about it too. Oh, David Weir, look being how a middle distance is. runner, I'm sure he really appreciates this. Yes, come on, he says. Kisses the badge. He actually kissed the Adidas badge rather than the Great Britain badge, but we won't mention that. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> we won't. Yeah. It's the other side. We know what you meant. Weir Army. What a fantastic end to what a brilliant night of Paralympic athletics. A home winner. A really exciting race. And really tactical, wasn't it? Really Very tactical right from the beginning. They were changing all the time. And, and what was interesting, in the last four laps, the crowd just got louder and louder. And we almost didn't hear the bell. And then uh, those last 400 metres, we're coming from second into the top position. And we wondered if the Thai competitor on the inside might have got bumped slightly. I so don't this know. is what you're talking about right here. I thought the Swiss athlete just came slightly across here. And just what Waharam here got bought slightly I don't think it'll affect David Weir getting the gold no. but it slows the Swiss competitor down as well so Fernley coming through from Australia David Weir smooth as anything his head down nothing's going to deny him here he takes the gold Fernley of Australia will take the silver and I think uh, I think it was the Swiss competitor who got the bronze I think it was Hugo got in there for the bronze yes it's hard to tell because the camera's not quite on the Korean coming very wide he might just have got there as well but we'll bring you confirmation of that when we get it but there's no doubt who's won it David Weir of Great Britain in front of a very noisy home crowd Lord Coe 
who's done such a brilliant job in organising, putting together the London bid, then organising the games with Kate Middleton, married to Prince William. And now he's got oh. the Union Jack on. Oh, and he's lost it. He had it. He's lost, you've lost your flag. He's flagging at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> like to finish on a punt he's lost his flag again David Weir he's lost his give him another flag give the man a flag I imagine that's one of the most enjoyable victory laps that you can do at home earning that victory he played it really smart he was there he was at the front he was out of trouble the whole time he knew he had the sprint I'm sure that everybody else knew he had the sprint but he also had to earn it he went out wide on that last turn he went out in two and a half three to make it so that meant he went a whole lot more distance than those guys in lane one there's a wheelie to celebrate as he kisses that lady in the crowd i don't know if that was his mother or a relative or a friend but uh, he went straight over to her but he has to navigate all of these camera positions now because there's pits and all sorts of things there where they put the cameras safely back on the track <laughs> he's lost his flag but never mind so confirmation that it was uh, the French oh, yeah. who, uh, who got the uh, bronze, firmly confirmed as the silver medalist. And Marcel Huger for Switzerland, who looked so strong for a lot of the race. He was fourth, and uh, Waharam of Thailand, I think, was very harshly treated. I think he got a bump on the inside from Hoog, but it slowed Hoog down as well. But no doubt the winner, deserved winner, David Weir of Great Britain.